Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. I'm happy to say that I'm feeling much better now after my sciatica and aches and pains that I've been dealing with over the last few months because basically I realised that I've been overcorrecting for the posture problems that had started all this off. So I was giving myself new issues as a result. So basically now I've reset things. I seem to be doing much better. I'm gradually improving again, which is great. And it's meant that I've been able to go out and about a bit more. So for the first time in a year, I've been able to start meeting some friends of mine. And these particular close friends I met recently, it's the first time I'd seen them in 20 months. You know, we kept in touch online during the pandemic, of course, but this was the first time we'd seen each other in person for ages. So it was a real joy to see them and catch up with them properly again. We spent an afternoon in St Paul's Cathedral, which was lovely. It's always a beautiful place. Now, I've been there before for an audio described tour, and they now want to come back at some point in the future and do an audio described tour themselves because it was the first time they'd been in there on this occasion, so it gave them a good sense of what the place was about. We picked up one of their ordinary audio guides, which doesn't have the easiest screen to see, but it gave a lot of interesting information about the history of the cathedral and there were some pauses for reflection and stuff like that. There's a lot of information on there. It was really interesting to listen to. There is an audio described guide you can pick up as well, but because we just went in there on a whim we didn't think that that was even possible to get one of those so at some point in the future I want to go back and try the audio described guide because the last time I went there I actually had an audio described tour in person which was great you got to feel some of the statues and things like that and I know there are other tours they do as well so I want to go back there myself anyway there's so much to see there it's a beautiful building and we ate well too we went to various places like Pretzo in Euston and KFC which is traditional for us and a shout out to Mabel's Tavern in Euston as well which we've never been in before but they were really nice with us they brought a bowl of water over from my friend's guide dog without us even having to ask for it which was lovely of them and they offered to move us to another table if we wanted more room when a large group left so they were really friendly and lovely in there so it was only nice to give them a shout out I think and yeah we just had a lovely time getting together so hopefully I'm going to be meeting more friends over the coming weeks and I've also started booking theatre shows again as well I'm not going to say what they all are because I don't want to spoil any surprises but there's quite a lot of audio described shows coming up which is lovely and there's also one show that I've been offered a ticket to go and see to review so I've mentioned that in my blog as well because it's States of Mind which is being performed by Extant which is a group of visually impaired performers and it's basically based on a Shakespeare poem the very first published work that he ever had. So it sounds quite interesting and it's got integrated audio description as well, which is good. So I've written about that in the blog post if you want to go and find out more about that and I'll link to the actual page about the production in the description below as well. So do go and check that out. You might want to go and see that. That's at the Rada Studios in London and sounds pretty good. So that's it for the out and about stuff. Not too much to mention there, but hopefully there'll be more to talk about in the weeks and months ahead at long last because I've missed writing about that kind of stuff and talking about it. But now it's on to the entertainment I've been enjoying and there's plenty to mention here. There's documentaries, sport, drama, comedy and music, so plenty to get through. None of it is sponsored or gifted, it's only that theatre show I mentioned just now where I've been offered a ticket for it. But in talking of sponsorship type things, I am aware that adverts have started appearing in one or two of my videos as well. Maybe it's happened quite a lot in the past, I don't know, but I kind of noticed it the other day. So just to say, that's nothing to do with me, I'm not monetizing my videos, that's just a new YouTube policy where they're sticking adverts on any video they like. So sorry if that bothers you. There are ad blockers out there which you can get if you really want to skip them. But yeah, I'm not making any money from those. But all that aside, I'm just going to crack straight on with all the entertainment stuff for this video and I hope you enjoy it. So first of all, I want to mention a couple of documentaries about disabled people that were recommended to me by a good friend of mine. The first of which is Crip Camp on Netflix. And it's also available for free on their YouTube channel, which is very, very rare of Netflix to do anything like that. But it is a big deal because it's an award-winning and Oscar-nominated film that was released last year that has executive producers including Barack and Michelle Obama. And it takes us on a journey with a group of disabled people in 1970s America as they attend a special summer camp run by hippies for teenagers with disabilities. And it gives them a huge amount of freedom to do pretty much anything they want. Certainly a lot more than you would ever get away with in a modern-day camp of that kind of nature. So it was a really joyful and liberating experience for them, not just because they could do so many things that they could never do in the outside world before, but also because they got to meet other handicapped people people which many of them had never done before so they really enjoyed themselves there and there's a lot of great archive footage from those camps you get to see just how much fun they're having and how important it is to them and there's present day recollections and people who are there of course so it's nice to hear them talking about it with such fondness but also while they were there they came to realize and discover just how segregated they'd been from society and how many of their rights had been taken away from them so as a direct result many of them were inspired to become disability activists and ended up passionately fighting and protesting and campaigning for disability rights and awareness and for accessibility to vision to be signed into law in America. I mean, it is shocking in that film to see just how badly many disabled people were being treated by others, especially children, but also adults as well. And it's certainly very sad and shameful that such an uprising was necessary in the first place to demand that able-bodied people just respected their basic human rights and dignity. It seems common sense to us now, and even now there's still a lot of fighting that needs to be done, but certainly these people had a huge impact. It's very
very inspiring to see just how hard they fought for their rights and the huge impact that they did manage to have. So it's a very powerful and educational and entertaining film as well. It's not hard going. It is long at one hour 45 minutes, but it is well worth it. It is a good thing to watch. So I do highly recommend it. And then over on the BBC iPlayer, there's a documentary called Blind Ambition, which is about a TV director called Jamie O'Leary, who is on the verge of losing what little vision he has left as a result of eye surgery he's about to have. So he sets off on a road trip with a blind comedian called Jamie McDonald's to meet other talented blind people, including a photographer and a rapper and a woodturner, an opera singer and an artist, to find out how they cope and to have a go at their crafts as well. And as a result, they help to create a music video and an art exhibition, as well as trying out a rap battle and other bits and pieces. And a special song is made about them by a guy from the Black Eyed Peas who is also visually impaired so it's very light hearted and it's often amusing they don't take it all too seriously as they're doing these different tasks but there are serious messages in there as well you know there's honest discussions about the impact of sight loss and the difficulty of adjusting to it so it's very educational and enlightening but it is a lot of fun to watch as well and talking of disabled people, it's also worth mentioning Gordon Reid and Alfie Hewitt, who won the wheelchair doubles final for Great Britain at the US Open Tennis Championships. So congratulations to them. That was fantastic. But of course, the big star of the US Open Tennis this year wasn't a disabled person, but it was another British star, a young lady called Emma Raducanu. I don't need to say much about her because she was all over the news and social media and everything, but she had a spectacular victory in the women's singles final, and it was really great to watch. You know, I don't watch tennis normally. The last time I saw a match was Andy Murray's Olympic victory in 2012, but when Channel four managed to strike a deal with Amazon to show it on free to air terrestrial TV and everyone was talking about it I thought I'd watch it and it was a very exciting match the lady she played against was great as well all credit to her she was also fantastic it was a very tight match but Emma's victory was very well deserved especially after the competition she's had as well and she even persevered after getting injured in the final as well so yeah she was just great and she's so level headed and calm about everything the fame and the pressure haven't been getting to her so far and hopefully that will continue she's really been catapulted into the limelight now so let's hope she copes with that well and gets all the support she needs so congratulations to her and all the best to her for the future as well I think she's going to be fantastic so then moving on to drama and my big binge watch this month was Designated Survivor on Netflix which was recommended to me by another close friend and basically in America the Designated Survivor is someone in the presidential line of succession who is squirreled away in a secret location while everybody else meets for big engagements like the State of the Union address and so on which means that if they're all taken out for whatever reason this single person can take over as president and reform the government as necessary and run the country to keep things moving along so it's a very important role to have and this drama plays out that scenario as if it was actually required and it features Kiefer Sutherland from 24 and various other things so a big star at the heart of it and he plays Tom Kirkman who suddenly finds himself president after the Capitol building is destroyed in a huge terrorist attack during the State of the Union address and the government's wiped out so he has a lot of political hurdles to overcome including forming the government again you know, getting people around him and persuading Congress and the Senate to support him and persuading the electorate to accept him as a president you know because he wasn't voted in he just found himself in the role so he has to persuade them that he's a legitimate leader and so there's all these political dramas and challenges going on and he's got a great cast of characters around him as well who support him and advise him and challenge him when necessary and they have interesting subplots of their own too so you get to know everyone quite well and then also there's the investigation into the terrorist attack of course going on led by FBI agent Hannah Wells played by Maggie Q she's also very good and as she investigates it it becomes clear there's a big set of conspiracies going on and there's further terrorist plots and things like that so there's a lot of intrigue and action there as well and the audio description is excellent as well it helped to point out lots of little details that were important to the plot that I would otherwise have missed so that was really useful so it was a great show to watch it was quite exciting and engaging and I was able to watch two or three episodes a day quite easily but that was for the first two seasons out of the three because those first two seasons have been made for the ABC network on TV but then they cancelled it after that and Netflix decided to pick it up for a third season and they ruined it unfortunately for all sorts of reasons really the political tone for a start changes significantly it's like the writers have just been told right pick a controversial hashtag issue so to speak each week and have people argue for and against it and although those issues are important and tv shows can raise a lot of awareness by dealing with them the way they've done it here it just feels forced and just doesn't feel right it's just there for the sake of it to tick a box if anything and there's also a greater focus on relationships and romantic connections between the characters including some sex and nudity so there's more of a soap opera type feel to it there's a lot of bad language as well which i don't mind having in shows but it's very jarring when you haven't had it for two seasons on the trot you know the characters just weren't doing it before so that just feels very out of place and there is a terrorism storyline as well going on in the background and that has the potential to be very exciting and to put the cat among the pigeons by disrupting everything but nothing ever comes of it and it just sort of fizzles out near the end there was a major moment for one character during it but even that felt very underwhelming compared to you know what they deserved and right at the end of season two there was a major twist for one of the characters that makes you kind of want to watch season three to find out what it's all about but in season three it's just quickly dealt with in a couple of scenes and brushed aside and we don't hear about it again and 
are also a few other characters who just vanish after season two and their absence isn't explained at all in season three. I'm not told why they've gone and why they've been replaced. And there's a scene where the president's sitting on the toilet. So that final season was very disappointing. As I knew it would be from the reviews I'd read beforehand, it's kind of overwhelmingly panned that final season. But I thought I'd check it out out of curiosity. Netflix have cancelled the series as well now and they kind of claim it was due to contractual difficulties with the actors, but surely the negative feedback must have been a factor as well. So it's very unlikely that more will be made again anyway. And also in terms of TV drama, I'm still watching season seven of The Flash, of course, and that's going to finish soon. So I'll give my overall reaction to that series in my next favourites post. And then in terms of audio, Richard Osman has released his second crime novel called The Man Who Died Twice. And it's the sequel to his debut novel, The Thursday Murder Club, which was a huge success. And Mum and I are listening to that first book again now to refresh our memories of it and re-familiarise ourselves with the characters and to just enjoy the story again, because it is good. And we're just listening to a few chapters a day as we have our dinner, as we like to do. So it'll take us a little while to get through that and then through the second book afterwards. So I'll give my opinion on Richard's new novel at a later date, but I'm expecting it to be good. So then moving on to comedy, and typically for this time of year, several new series have started all at once. Some of them have only just started at the very end of September, and they're going to continue into October and November. So I won't say too much about them until a later favourites post, but Taskmaster and The Last Leg are always good fun, and they're now back on Channel 4. And The Last Leg has an audience now, which is great. And there's a new series on Dave called Outsiders, which is a bit like a kind of countryside survival version of Taskmaster, where comedians are given challenges to do in the great outdoors, and that's hosted by David Mitchell. And then there's a revival of Nevermind the Buzzcocks over on Sky, hosted by Greg Davis, and that's got off to a very strong start, so I'm looking forward to watching more of that. But I have also binge-watched a couple of series in their entirety, as the BBC put all the episodes on the iPlayer at once, from the moment the first episode was broadcast. They do this for quite a few shows these days, where you can watch the entire box set from the outset, which is great. So The Goes Wrong Show, performed by the wonderful Mischief Theatre team, is back for series two, so once again we get to see the Cornley Drama Society fail in their efforts to put on a differently themed play every week for our entertainment, because they have trouble with bad acting, props, costumes, set design and so on. So many things can go wrong. It's really well written and put together every week. It's always hilarious. And this series has four full-length plays, including the Nativity Christmas special that's also on iPlayer. That does count as part of this series. And then a two-part drama festival at the end where individual members of the Cornley cast present their own little mini-plays and workshops that they've each written, each involving their castmates, of course, as well. So there's a nice variety of stuff going on there. There's something different every week to enjoy, which really helps the series to stay fresh. And there's also an enjoyable rivalry between director Chris Bean and actor Robert Grove throughout the run as well so Robert takes over as director in the first episode he's taken over in a coup because he thinks he can do better and clearly he can't as quickly becomes obvious so Chris Bean takes over for the rest of the series but Robert still clearly isn't happy with that so there's a lot of great interaction between the two of them as well so it's another great series basically I'm really happy to have that back and then there's another show starring Greg Davis which is a new sitcom he's written called The Cleaner and it's okay it's not a great show particularly but it does have some amusing moments so it's worth watching and basically he plays a specialist who cleans up crime scenes in people's homes after the police have finished and that means he gets to meet different residents every week as he goes to different properties so he gets to meet a lady in a wheelchair and a young online influencer and a struggling author and an aristocrat and so on and there's some good guest stars in there like David Mitchell and Helena Bonham Carter and Stephanie Cole etc who are good in their roles so as I say while it's not a classic sitcom by any means it's not superb it's okay it's worth watching once and then apart from all that I've finished the latest series of Alan Davis as yet untitled on Dave which had a good variety of guests and some very entertaining stories and I've listened to the extended podcast on Audible as well which added some extra stories and chatter so it's been fun to have that back and then over on Radio 4 the new series of Just a Minute has started with Sue Perkins as the host now taking over from the dearly departed and very much missed Nicholas Parsons who had hosted the show for over 50 years and she isn't as good as him and she acknowledges that herself nobody could be it's a very difficult pair of shoes to fill without a doubt but she's not doing a bad job she's been settling down as the episodes progress and she's very respectful of the format and you've still got a lot of the regular guests of course like Paul Merton and others so it still feels much the same as ever it's just a new voice and a new style to get used to really but yeah it's still good fun and then in sad news we lost John Chalice at the age of 79 this month he was best known for playing Boise in Only Fools and Horses and the Green Green Grass spin-off of course but he had a huge TV and theatre career beyond that as well so he'll be very much missed and it was also sad to hear about the loss of status quo bass player Alan Lancaster at the age of 72 so that's another big loss from the world of music which brings me on to the final section of course so in terms of music and as you no doubt know already we've now had new material from ABBA for the first time in 40 years which is incredible and it sounds like they've never been away they've still got that classic sound with their two new songs there's a beautiful ballad called I Still Have Faith in You and a catchy track called Don't Shut Me Down and they're both from their new album Voyage which will be released on the 5th of November and that will coincide with ABBA Voyage which is a special concert experience in the Olympic Park in London which will feature digitised avatars of themselves performing their greatest hits with a live band so that could be interesting to look at and then a new album I've bought this month is a new comedy album from the Horn section featuring Alex Horn from Taskmaster 
called Ultra Bulk, which features all the silly songs from series six and seven of their podcast, which I've never listened to in its entirety. I've heard bits here and there, but never listened to the whole thing, never had the time. So that's another amusing collection of songs. All their albums have got lots of amusing, silly things on them. And then as for Queen, it's amazing to think that Freddie Mercury would now be 75. So happy birthday to him. And to mark the occasion, I listened to a couple of special shows that were on BBC Radio 2. So there was a repeat of a 2017 edition of Friday Night is Music Night, where the band's songs were performed by the BBC Concert Orchestra with a rock band and four stars of the musical We Will Rock You. So that sounded very cool, as you can imagine. But then also during the interval of that show, Annika Rice met some school students who have been learning to perform the music of Queen, even listening to the multi-tracks to hear how they were all constructed. And it was great to hear their admiration and appreciation for the band and bits of their performances. And it's always wonderful when Queen's music is inspiring a new generation like that. So well done to them. And then there was a brand new edition of Sounds of the 70s hosted by Johnny Walker, where he played some of Queen's biggest hits from that decade and spoke to Brian May about them as well. And there were no major revelations to a big Queen fan like me, but it's always great to hear him speak. It's always very interesting to listen to him. And he got a chance to promote his new solo reissue of Back to the Light as well, of course. And talking of that reissued album, Brian has released a new video for the title track Back to the Light called The Time Traveller, where present day Brian performs with the 1992 version of himself on stage. It's very cleverly done. And the track is being released as a single in October, coupled with Nothing But Blue from the album and a karaoke instrumental version of Back to the Light as a bonus too. And then Roger Taylor has also released another new track called The Clapping Song from his new album Outsider, which is now out by the time you see this. It came out at the start of October. It's an upbeat track and it's the only cover song on the album, having originally been performed by Shirley Ellis and sampled by various artists since then. So I'll review the album in my next favourites post, of course. And then finally, there's also a new Queen pop-up store in Carnaby in London, which will be open until January. And there's a slightly different theme to the store each month as well. There's also going to be a selected range of items you can buy online, but they'll be far more available in the store in person. So I'll definitely be paying that a visit at some point because I really enjoyed my visit to their previous pop-up store in Carnaby a few years ago. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they have on offer this time. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching that. As ever, I hope you found things in there that were of interest and enjoyment to you. And hopefully in future videos, I can talk about theatre shows and museum exhibitions and socialising and walks and other bits and pieces like I used to do. I've missed doing all that stuff. But in the meantime, I hope you all continue to stay safe and well and look after others around you too, because we're not out of the woods with this pandemic yet by any means. We've got to get through this winter in particular. So do continue to be careful if you can. And yeah, that's it, as I say. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye!